Why is James Lowe's left peg such a weapon? Well, today we're going to be discussing the five reasons and hang around to the end because there's a special bonus one just for you. Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Hot Topic series. And this one is inspired by the current Six Nations, and I'm putting out a ton of content during the Six Nations. So make sure you hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. But in this episode, we're going to be looking at James Lowe's left peg and why it's such a weapon. And to discuss it, I've got one of my most popular former podcast guests with me today, Mr. Phil Greenaway. Phil, how are you? Hi, Tim. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. Really excited by this one. Yeah, me too. James Lowe, what a beautiful rugby player and an epic left peg. We've got five reasons, Phil. What's the first one? Uh, the first one, Tim, for me, is just how long he kicks the ball. Uh, he can kick it an absolute country mile. He's got an absolute siege gun of a, a left peg. And just the length he, he puts on those kicks, you know, he's kicking 22 to 22 comfortably. Uh, he can equally kick it really high. He must his hang time must be about 10 days. I think the ball's up there by the time it drops down. So, yeah, for me, just that real, that length of kick and just how long he can kick it. Yeah, and he's really consistent as well, right? You rarely see him scuff one or just kind of kick it half length or something like that. Super consistent. Yeah, I mean, you know, if he if he if he fails to make the the opposition half, then he might be disappointed. But I don't think I can remember seeing him do that, even from his own five meter line, from a kick off or from a kick return. He just kicks it a, an absolute long, you know, a, a country mile, and it must be a joy to play behind. Yeah, the forwards just watching that ball whiz over your head again and again and again. Okay, that's that's number one. What's number two? Uh, number two for me is, is the, the variety of kicking options they've got. So um, they've got three different kicking options in their, in their team. They've got the right foot of 10. They've got <clears throat> whoever's playing at nine. They've got great box kicks options. Um, so Jameson Gibson Park, Conor Murray, if he's playing, uh, Jack Crowley uh, and James Lowe, they've got setups everywhere. So in the middle of the pitch, if on the left-hand side, right-hand side, whatever it might be, they, they can just kick from anywhere and kick length. And it means that the, the opposition have really got to work hard to figure out where those kicks are going to go, where they're kicking to the floor, where they're kicking long. Um, so that whichever option they use, they've just got that variety in their, in, their, in their game. They can use anyone at any time. Yeah, and there was a brilliant example of this in the very first play of the game at the weekend. Stephen Varney came on a rush line to James Lowe, who just passed it to Jack Crowley, and then had all the time in the world to bang it up to the halfway line. It was just, it was just perfect. It was just beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. And I think if you know they, you know, clearly the it, it, Italians had done their homework in terms of you know shutting him down nice and early, uh, because James Lowe had such an effect on that French game early on. And it's, as you said, they chased him down and literally it's one pass and they've got another kicking option just to the side where they've not applied the pressure and he's absolutely boomed it, you know, into the opposition 22. And uh, yeah, yeah, just a variety of kicking options they've got are, are fantastic. Yeah. OK, so that's one and two and they lead very nicely into reason number three, Phil. Well, because of the variety of kicking options they've got. You know, if you're playing against Ireland, you've got to cover the backfield. <clears throat> you've got to play with at least four, three or four back. Um, and this then presents opportunities for them to be able to shift the ball and move the ball into that space, the opposition of left wide. So, again, you saw it on, on Saturday. You know, the Italians had four in the backfield and the scrum half covering. Uh, they'd set up for a kick or it looked like they'd set up for a kick. They came out the back and they made 50 yards just by going down the right hand side. Um, you know, so they've got options every, everywhere <clears throat> because of that. You know, because of, because of those kicking options, they then got options to play at the back of it because of the, the defensive teams have got to cover the backfield so 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 well to be able to cope with those kicking options. Yeah, amazing. Okay, that's three. What's uh, what's number four? Well, I guess linked to that is they're just brilliant at spotting where the space is. You know, so if they've not covered the backfield, they're so good at then shifting the ball wide and spotting where the space is. Um, and I guess, you know, if you've got four in the backfield and then the defence is stretched across the middle, again, they're great at spotting those opportunities where the space is to take the right little options, you know, on those little short lines or coming out the back. Um, so that kick, those kicking options allow them the ability to be able to play to where the space is. So even if they've not covered the backfield, they're brilliant at spotting it. And James Lowe or Jack Crowley, depending on which side it's on, will absolutely boom at a country mile. Uh, they're happy to kick to floor as well and, and organise a good kick chase to floor. So just really that recognition of where the space is and, and creating the right options, taking the right options out of, out of that. And as a, with your coaching hat on, Phil, 
how would you kind of encourage players to be good at identifying the right options? Uh, I don't know if I had the answers to that, Tim. I'd probably be sitting in Steve Borthwick's chair at the moment. But um, I think it's just just not being afraid to make the wrong decision. I think, you know, if Ireland do make the wrong decision, as in they don't bust through, they're so good at them regrouping, winning that rock ball, and then making the next one a good decision. So as a player, I might make a bad decision, but that's on me. But all my teammates are there to help me out, make sure we win that rock back and make sure we've got good quality ball off the back of it. So, yeah, just don't be scared of making those mistakes that are going to happen, particularly for young kids and young players. You know, just get out there and, and, and give it a crack. OK, amazing. So they kick the ball and that gives us nicely into option number, reason number five, I should say. <clears throat> Their kick chase is absolutely on point. <clears throat> you know, they, they chase hard. Sometimes you'll see them grubber through and their kick chase is hard. They've got three or four chasing on the ball. Their forwards do a great job filling the middle of the pitch and coming up really, really hard. But their kick chase is so well organised um, and they get great returns out of that. They get huge returns out of their of their kick chase. And everybody in that kick chase, it feels like they've got a purpose and they've got a job and they're all they're all connected and they're all doing something together. They're all they're all involved in it. Um, and they and they they just go so hard. They just their kick chase is just so, so pressured down the middle in particular. The forces Again, the Italians on Saturday force them to maybe play from their own 22, maybe 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 pass inside or pass they don't really want to make. They just want to be able to kick the ball off the pitch. Um, but yeah, their kick chase is excellent. Yeah, and if you want to try and figure out whether a team is working hard for each other, whether they've got good culture, whether they've got great team spirit, you'll see it in the kick chase. And that definitely is true of this island team. OK, those are the five reasons, but don't forget the bonus one. What's the bonus, Phil? The bonus one for me is just how good they are They are at set-piece time. So they're happy to kick the ball off the pitch if they need to. Their scrum is excellent. Their line is excellent. So, you know, they, they don't mind kicking it out. And they, they'll compete at everything, you know, whether that be um, on the floor, if there's a ruck. Uh, but their, their set-piece is so, so good and so, so solid, you know, with the, with the type five they've got and the line-out options they've got. They pressurise at all times the opposition line-out. And they win a lot of scrum penalties um, on opposition ball as well. Yeah, Peter Armani in particular, I want to pick out. I think he's one of the greatest defensive line-out jumpers maybe the game's ever seen. I think he's he is that good. He's so fast into the air. Yeah, he, he's fantastic. And and again, they 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 make the opposition work hard at line-out time. They make them work really really hard. They you know they'll, they'll stack the pod at the front and make them throw to the back or whatever it might be. But they they don't give any ball up easily. They don't give anything up easily at the set piece time. Um, and again, maybe that forces scrums off the back of that. There might be a, a, a little knock on at the line out. There might be a catch and drive. They're not, not gone quite as well because they're all, always ultra competitive and they're happy to scrum and they're happy to, to, to line out if they need to. Yeah, amazing. OK, that's what we think. But what about you at home? Any other reasons why James Lowe's left peg is such a weapon? Let us know in the comments down below and we'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind while you're down there. I just need to say, Phil, thanks very much again for your time today. Thanks, Tim. Thanks very much. And for you at home, you can subscribe there. Watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.